adolescent children doing things that 20, 30 years ago was totally unheard of. We see things going on in the TV, uh, the things they speak about and do, that you would have never seen back then. The culture shock part comes in when they see how loose the society has become where they went to out into the public society and how strict or how regulated it was where they came from, they started to get the inclination that where they was at was a prison. When there was never uh, uh, an intent of prison, we lived on a free land, they were allowed to run around free, we didn't lock our doors, they were allowed to, uh, to, to, to pretty much do anything they wanted to do as long as they were doing what they were supposed to do, which is, you can ask any of them, all of them got their education. Not only were they... Not only did they get high school diplomas, a lot of them went on to get degrees in other aspects. Just about all of them learned skills, uh, graphic arts, uh, sewing, uh, mold making, things of that nature. We had cultural dances. All of them learned things there that you would now, in this day and time, you don't even see children do anymore. You, will, you would rarely see someone who's 19 years old who knows how to do an entire website on a computer that they learned from an academic point of view, as opposed to learning how to operate a PlayStation. So once they moved into society, it was easy to, for the prosecution to reach out to them as disgruntled adolescents, children, uh, being disgruntled about the things that they weren't allowed to do, that no one wants their children to do, drugs, alcohol, uh, criminal activities, and not being able to run around loosely. It was easy for them to become disgruntled. Um, I even had a chance to speak to one of them, who was a witness for the prosecution, who literally said that she didn't know that uh, the things that we were doing as a culture was something that the entire world wasn't doing. She didn't realize that you could actually live in a world, graduate from high school, and not learn how to read and write, because that's something that we didn't tolerate. She didn't find that out until she moved out to the world away from our culture and seen how the rest of the world was living. So this conspiracy um, really started way before the arrest of Zakhti Malakazi York, and it was because of the many times that uh, we had situations such as the Sheriff Howard Richard Seals coming up on our land at different points of time, although he's a sheriff in the name of the building inspections. Um, that he became a known figure for someone who was adversarial to us, our culture, and to Dr. Malachi York. He had something personally against us as a people because we were law-abiding citizens, all of us. We were law-abiding citizens. As a matter of fact, it is taught within our doctrine, within the publications that Dr. Malachi York has written, that not only are we law-abiding citizens, our entire doctrine is to seek out knowledge of the Most High to become as spiritual as possible, to be as good as people as we can, and to abide by the laws of the land that we were living in. But him being a figure known to society, these people knew exactly where to reach out to once they became uh, vindictive and decided they were going to carry through with some of the conspiracies. They knew exactly who to reach out to to go forth and carry through with these conspiracies of revenge and vengefulness against Dr. Malachi York. They had no idea that it was going to become what it became, the arrest of Dr. Malachi's York uh, on bogus charges and him receiving 135 years in prison for, uh, for, for something that not only he did not do, but it's not even a valid claim. Um, it wasn't until after that that some of them actually expressed their regret and came forward with the recantments to say, you know, we had no idea that it was going to evolve into this. And once they actually went into the hands of the prosecution, then it became a thing where there was no turning back because they were threatened, they were coerced. If you don't go forward with this, we're going to take your children from you. If you don't go forward with this, uh, some of the things that are being held over your head and some of the things that are being held over your parents' head because their parents at different points in time had fallen into the traps of our society that put them in situations where they had court cases against them, child support cases against them, um, outstanding violations which they could have been arrested, incarcerated, or fined for, uh, held against them. That was held over the heads of some of these children. So being scared and coerced, they continued on with this conspiracy, um, came up with these vindictive lies, 
and went forward just, just out of fear. You know, that's one of the tactics that the devil used on a regular basis is fear tactics. So what started out to be a plot by a bunch of dissatisfied adolescents, like all children do, the moment in time you tell them they can't hang out with such and such who's a drug dealer or, you know, they have to go to school and get an education, it turned into something totally different once these young children got into the hands of the what we call the prosecution, um, these vindictive people who had something against us and our culture just because we were something different. Uh, once they, once they got into their hands, it became a whole different uh, a whole different animal. And so here we are in this day and time, with this conspiracy as being played out. A lot of those children are now adults who realize that you know in in what it was that we offered as a culture was the best thing because they now have children who they tell their children no you're going to have to go to school yes you need to get an education yes you need to stay away from drugs yes you need to stay away from crime and yes you do need to speak out seek out knowledge of the most high and become the best person you can be not only to yourself but towards other people thank you very much brother K. I think that, that really started us off getting that kind of perspective of the mentality um, that many of these individuals had that we're going to continue to deal with in the second segment of our program today. Um, now we're going to move on to the South Beach conspiracy aspect. Um, the South Beach conspiracy has become known, or the Jacob York conspiracy as it's become known, consisted in, of a situation where some members who left the community for many of the reasons that um, the Brother Bernard just alluded to when he was speaking, um, left the community and became disgruntled and disillusioned. Um, they allowed those personal hurts or personal dislikes to be manipulated for them to be coerced to participate in a conspiracy to frame Dr. York. Now we're fortunate enough to have this conspiracy was so powerful that they were blocked when we went to trial to free our master teacher because what they have to say busts this whole thing wide open. So we want you to hear their perspective on the conspiracy issue involved in this case. Um, we wanted to start with the Brother Basile. Um, if you would, can you kind of discuss your relationship with Jake York um, and also kind of just give an overview of how what the conspiracy was and how it kind of took shape. I sure will, to the best of my ability. <laughs> and welcome family, thanks for tuning in. And uh, this is really a blessing to be able to explain to the world and bring the truth on our form, not on the devil's form, not on his time, not on his commercials, on our form and our way. So you can see clearly the conspiracy, the steps that led up to the incarceration and the unjust kidnapping of our master teacher. Um, for those that are just need, who needs a, uh, basically a, a basic foundation on the mentality, excuse me, the mentality of the younger children who were raised in the community, which I was fortunate enough to uh, be raised amongst the young brothers and sisters, Mokmanun and Mokmanati, in Philadelphia's community. Uh, went to school with them. We ate together, prayed together, danced together, stressed together. All the things that um, our community was set up and the principles that Dr. Malakazi York had laid down for us to live up for and by each other. I was blessed to experience that. 